<laughs> well, I, we were talking in the last podcast about games that I have sold, and I, mm-hmm. I want to kind of continue talking about that here, if that's okay. You yeah, hear, go ahead. You want to hear? I'm, I'm, what have you sold that you could have sold to me? I mean, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> last week, I talked about a couple games that were still on the auction block that didn't sell yet. I'm happy to say officially they sold a couple days oh, ago. Oh, excellent. Now. Yeah, I sold a... So I mean, you guys book. Sorry, go ahead. You got a pretty, uh, you got a pretty penny from Shatterhand, at least. <laughs> oh yeah, I was very excited about Shatterhand. Conquest of the Crystal Palace. Ooh, that's another good NES that game. That one was complete in box. I just sold it. Well, maybe I won't say what I sold it for, <laughs> but let's just say I got full like value of the game. Hmm. So if you look on price charting, that's pretty much I got around there. I wouldn't sell it okay. for less, to be honest. <laughs> But I mean, I, I bought the game from P&P Games many, many years ago. Literally twenty nine ninety nine plus tax. Did I tell you I sold my loose copy of Cowboy Kid for the Nintendo? Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember the video where you found that <laughs> ages ago. I actually ended up selling that box and manual to Ian. Oh, nice. Keeping it in the family. Making the cartridge itself almost like completely paid for. Because I got the game for like 75 bucks with box and manual. Nice. And a good buddy of mine bought it off me, the box and manual, for 50 bucks. And apparently, if I'd kept the box and manual for Cowboy Kid, I could have mm-hmm. doubled what I made. Minimum. Doubled what I made for the loose cartridge. I made about $275 Canadian for it around there. Wow. Loose, like the cartridge by itself. But if I had kept the box and manual, I would have sold it for well over five, $600. <laughs> I don't want to tell people yet how I'm selling it. I'm sure like people in the know know how I'm selling it, but I could have I could have got a pretty penny if I kept the box in manual. But it stayed in the family, I guess, like you said. Yeah, sometimes it's okay to just let it stay in the family. Yep. And I sco- <laughs> I sold some scat. Some scat. Oh goodness! Scat. I thought we were gonna try and keep this episode clean. Jeez. <laughs> Special cybernetic something something. The Nintendo attack game. team, I think. Yeah, I played the game uh, once since I bought it. <laughs> it's it's honestly a pretty hard game, but uh, you know I enjoyed. It. I got it loaded up on my uh, legally backup box. <laughs> Legal backup box. I bought the game <laughs> for about twenty. Yeah, I think I paid twenty dollars for it loose back on the uh, not the thirsty flea market. One of the other flea markets in the city, not Mandalay. Uh, uh, Mulvies. Mulvies. Yes, I bought it from a guy there for twenty bucks loose. Nice. I ended up selling it for a hundred dollars. <laughs> So I just, I'm going to reiterate this. I think now is the, the time to sell Nintendo games, especially if they're loose cartridges. I think the best value you're going to get was maybe a year ago. But today, I think, is it's now or never. For me, anyways. Like, I'm not giving you guys advice, but just for myself, it's now or never to sell those Nintendo games. I think... Um, okay, here's, here's my theory, Noah. This stays just for mm-hmm. the fans of the podcast, okay? Okay. Tell me if I'm crazy. Right. right now, people are still like in the honeymoon phase, I think, with this whole COVID social isolation thing. <laughs> yeah, the honeymoon. The honeymoon. It's It's been a long time, but literally, I think it just started. And people are just starting to get money now from the government, staying home, not working. Got to have something to, 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 you know, feed that, uh, feed the pleasure center of your brain, I guess. Oh, I feel like uh, it hasn't set in yet, the whole... What this is truly going to be. So people are still, I find right now people are buying. Online people are spending. Mm -hmm. And I think if this continues into the summertime, I don't think people are going to want to keep spending into the summer. Especially if they're getting just a portion of their income still. And they're not getting the full income. And I think, personally, I see a, so much like a recession happening. Well, I mean, that's kind of going to be happening for a lot of markets, I think. But yeah, definitely it will be happening for video games too. Absolutely, and I think, uh, like right now, do you agree, Noah, that we are in an, a time and age, like before the whole COVID thing, where people are actually spending pretty freely, you know, pretty frivolously? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Living like, buying things that they didn't need, you know? And I think eventually to get back to that point of like how society is where people are just buying things that they don't need without even giving it a second thought i think that's going to be years until we get back to that if not minimum five years what do you think 
I mean, it's definitely going to take uh, a bit to get to normality, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not very doom and gloom on the whole COVID thing. I, I think that we will eventually, like within a year maybe, get back to some semblance of normality. But it's not going to well, – it's obviously not going to be right away. It's going to take a little while because, you know, the virus could end up coming in waves, they said. And, I mean, that's just the reality of this thing. Anyways, my theory goes like this, okay? <laughs> Five years until we get back to where how we're spending today, where mm-hmm. the bull market everywhere, people are not really afraid of losing their money. And I think by the time that comes back, say five years from now, we're back to our spending habits that we were pre-COVID. I don't think people will be interested in Nintendo games anymore, or there'll be a definite drop in the popularity amongst casual uh, retro video game fans. Five years from now. I mean, like we like we said last time, you know, uh, Nintendo's time is kind of coming to an end almost because most of the people who grew up on Nintendo have already got their games. When they got disposable income back, so as adults, so yeah. like I think it's going to be my a lot of my generation now is going to be uh, getting into retro gaming with like PS2, GameCube, Xbox, Game Boy Advance. Hold on to those games, you're saying? Hey, until <laughs> that's that's the time to sell it, and maybe five years from now. Uh, yeah, may, maybe when your area mean, recovers uh, from COVID nineteen, <laughs> the millennials will bounce back. When the as Rona's long as we have gone. Pokemon, we're okay. When Rona fades into legend. Fades when into Rona life. becomes the stuff of legends. Yeah, I think but I, by then, the time to sell Nintendo is now or never. That's my prediction. Uh, that's not financial advice. That's just my thought, and that's my mentality right now. I'm selling a lot of things at least I don't care about. So Yeah. Up next on the chopping block, Noah, I'll tell you off air what I'm selling. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's everything I've sold so far. So some some pretty uh some some decent titles you know, uh, I think Shattered Hand was the most like marquee title you sold. I'm pretty sure uh, Cowboy Kid was. Oh okay, well I, I just think Shattered well, Hand got the most money for. I feel like Shattered Hand's more more well known in the retro community though, but that's just me. I mean Cowboy Kid Loose was 270 bucks or whatever. Shattered Hand, what did I say I made for Shattered? Look back, a couple hundred bucks I think. Oh, and I I sold Skeleton Crew. Did I mention that last week? Oh yeah, the Genesis the Genesis game Skeleton one Crew. One one Genesis game I sold Skeleton Crew complete in box. I bought that game, Thirsty's Flea Market, uh, twenty nine ninety nine from uh, the beautiful lady there. Thirty bucks I paid for it. <laughs> nice. And uh, ended up selling it for two hundred bucks. Nice. Wow. It's 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 worth that much now. I guess so. I didn't real. I did a random check on the game, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, selling that one." I haven't played wow, it once just, since I bought it. I remember when it was like ten bucks a, a couple of years ago. That just it, it always astonishes me how these prices drop and shoot up like out of nowhere. It's like Pokemon cards, man. <laughs> I don't get it either. I was gonna say I never sold my Pokemon cards, you but still that's have because them? yeah. You want to sell them? Not really. Well, maybe the doubles and triples and quadruples. I collected a lot of Pokemon cards as a kid. Not gonna lie. The market lie. is fresh, no The market <laughs> is hot right now. Pokemon is hot, and I don't I think mean, it'll stay that way for a while, or I don't think it'll uh, stay that way for much longer. Well, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. 